I'm drunk. So dressed from the night before. Little signs of struggle. They begin to cross my bed, my body going one way, my clothes having gone the other. Strangest thing. The sago palm leaf. Laying like a like a prayer rug on the floor. I have no idea how that large leaf got into my bedroom. I'm trying to remember everything about last night. Stretchy images dodge and reform themselves like as if you're, you're chasing your finger through water. Nothing formed. I got up, I came in here, and oh, I had a pickle. Wrapped in pepper jack cheese. <laughs> Today, there is no place I ever have to be. Well, there is no mission in the warning other than drinking. Well, that comes of its own. Something weird this morning. Strange. It's unusually quiet. I live on the busiest goddamn street in Hollywood. And there's no cars, no helicopters, no sirens. Very, very rare. <laughs> and of course, my oh, my shirt has twisted till to stern, and my pants suits to follow. It's like my pants and my shirt are still passed out. <laughs> Oh, my shoulder is tender and it aches like someone just punched me in there. Oh, maybe I slept on it wrong. I can't remember anything from last night. What did I do last night? Just a whisper of a told tale. I fell. Hmm. Well, 
as I wait for some baseless benediction to forgive my day. Let us, let us, let we, us, me, reconnoiter last night's events. I remember walking home from the bar, and I was romantic again. I had just enough booze in me to keep the course of the stars and to linger there. My head was running with words, lost propositions, written on floating bevnap stuffed in my jacket. These words would not, of course, be heard. They were more loose-leaf notes, markers to the well of despair, glad for obscurity, tucked wadded up, never to be seen, doomed to the Davy Jones locker under the stained one-night stand of my bungalow, nestled here in the flatlands of Hollywood. My bungalow. A simple room of disarray. A haven for my failed experiment to drink myself to death. Others, that they drank and caroused as much as I do, <laughs> they would have died already. You see, I have a large, seemingly indestructible frame of a boozing Frankenstein. And for some reason beyond my reckoning, I figure obviously, uh, I haven't served my purpose here on Earth, although I do remain a whistling corpse, unable to put myself down. Yeah. This is my charnel house. And once again, after a particularly romantic night, I remember I made a death march right back to it. See, Hollywood is my mecca. Uh, so I can throw stones at Satan, ask for the forgiveness of health, and walk in circles. I forage in whiskey. I leave my emotions behind. My Hollywood life is perfected insight of ruthless and its calling. The sober world has lost its charm. Nothing appeals. If ever there was a God, he's forgotten his duty and his binge drinking. It's hard to keep up with the profane and empty streets when bobbled in booze. I remember on that romantic night, was it last night? No matter. I remember the Hollywood lawns were high and the fog crept its way through the neighborhood, peppered with shadows and street lights. I remember. That's what I saw, yes. I saw it. Just in front of me, across the stillborn street, I saw a single window ablaze with creamy light. A perfect square that showed a rich inner life, hearth, and home. I gazed and I glared at the window, imagining who must live there in the chasm between their window and my window of clarity I looked for when 
booze outweighs my soul. Then the framing, well-groomed, dark, finished dining room table, bereft of burdens, sat in the middle of an orderly and tastefully roomed house turned to brownish tones. The modest four-part chandelier hung like a sentinel's beacon. Flaming light bulbs, 1933 socketry over the large table. All signs of people, but every sign of life. I, I lingered there, staring at this perfect square of life. It was a state where as the world became a smudge, my view of it was sharpened. I took to the empty window, looking at it. I was mesmerized, as though the window was revealing the other side of the ether, a completely different life and universe where no one lived, a sweet, abandoned place that my heart suddenly ached to know. <clears throat> Most prayers mock me. However, that night, was it last night? I took one half-breathed prayer, and I did not stop myself from addressing the window as a holy relic. Hail Mary, full and chaste. Did you squirt out Jesus like toothpaste? Amen. the best I could do. I'm not Catholic, mind you. I slurred at the window. Lily tumped over in a crude and irreverent genuflat tomb. I felt the moment needed some kind of liturgy, some saintly acknowledgement. I was convinced that something so void of people, so simple, must be God. God had trickled in my heart, into my soul. And I thought to myself, I must remember this holic and irreverent night. But how should I remember? I mean, I was boozed beyond remembrance. I stepped out. <laughs> to check a red rattle box newsstand that was healed and chained to a street light for the date, November 1st, All Saints Day. <laughs> oh, the irony. I leaned on the box. It was cold and dewy. I took the moment to breathe and the air and to stop spinning. God's invasion was proving to be too much. I tried for the seams to write myself again, spewing Jesus fucking Christ out of the Catholics to it. <laughs> you see, um, earlier, I had sat too long at the bar and let the whiskey pool ship moored in harbor unfit for sailing. My wheel wouldn't settle. And as I kept to a crooked stance on the 
newsstand cage, jumbled words of weathered napkins flew out like cut string kites into my pocket. They were lost in some same Vitus dance, and all thought and suggestion was scattered. All I was able to remember on this romantic night was my last dance. My last step, my last thought, before it too blew away. All according to plan. I pawed at the newsstand like an old drinking buddy, asking for directions back to the earth. The booze had unlatched the spring that kept my thoughts in order. They became unfiled and flew treacherous speed. I sourly mused and had the year pass so fast as my careening thoughts. I could not remember a single thing about the year. No memorable event stuck out as my cogs gave way to the heavenly disorders. The jumble of sense that was trying to convince me that I had lived another year regardless of the fact that I could remember nothing about it. Well, listing, I knew to keep going straight, keep moving, keep to the spin of the earth, each step framed from the ghost I might have conjured on the way. I marveled the path through the patch of lawn, wet from the watering, craning my head like a beaky, trying to figure out my bearings. Now here's the catch. I was on the wrong street. And regardless of the fact that I was five minutes away from my home, I could not figure out where I was. I was certain the world had changed its order. So I thought, write it down to remind myself of that window. A window like a burning bush that convinced me and made me feel as though I had squandered my time, as though I had wasted my life on the wrong things. This window had peeled the bell and revealed the stone that was hard and truer than anything I'd ever felt or known. My heart. Remember, it seemed to say. Of course, I was unable to write anything down. I tried to hold my pen, but it was like a one-legged chopstick, and I could only stab at illegible words, but the hieroglyphs of nonsense would just have to do. It was written as well to be expected, so I clumsily stuffed the napkin back into my pocket. All thoughts would eventually run out. So. Things were sliding. I was against the fall once again. But it did not prevent me from my mantra. This time you must remember. This time you must remember. This time you must remember. I grabbed from my pocket one flightless napkin of the evening. It said, <laughs> every time I hear pans rattling, I get hungry. <laughs> now, now this napkin had triggered the memory back to the first leg of my route. Every evening, like a soldier on watch, I make my appointed rounds to the stealthiest bars in Hollywood. That night, I began at the Rustic Inn, 
uh, my stomach, like clockwork, would invariably cave in when I heard the pans rattling in the kitchen gallows. <laughs> so I started to look for signs of the rustic. It could be if I found the rustic, I could connect the dots and go back to the bungalow and see how that happens, see how that works. No such luck. I was too adrift to make any sense out of anything. And well down an exasperated belch and fart that caused me to laugh, which triggered a ridiculous cycle of belching and laughing and farting. <laughs> I was lost. <laughs> I was lost, man. And the clock was ticking. <laughs> See, the, the longer I am out in the streets, the more likely I am to run into the cops, which certainly would have meant another night in jail and not in my bungalow. I hiccup up whimpers and the booze was flooding my gates with exaggerated emotions. I pantomimed and being lost with grand silly gestures like shaking my fists, big as ham hocks, toward the heavens, accentuated each pointed shake with small kabuki breaths. <laughs> Or I mock stumbled like a blind Oedipus toward pillars of doom. It was not where I wanted to be. The evening was beginning to cave in on itself. It was a very topsy-turvy world. And I stumbled through the hedges and Trash cans as though I was walking on a different earth than the one in front of me. I babble to the cadence of my own sloppy progress. Night is day, the sun, the moon, food is sleep, and sleep is food, so therefore I shall. Go where I came and abled from. And upon these words named and proclaimed to the Hollywood Escalade, I made an about face and began to march in the opposite direction. It was a first for me to be so lost and so suddenly lost at that. The whiskey curtain had never fallen as hard as it did that moment of turning. I was no longer aware of anything. I was straight jacketed by an insidious night, a substituted night. My, my heart began to race messages throughout informing me that I was left behind on earth and that my brain was suffocating. Nothing to grasp or to hold on to. I tried to heave a start out of third gear, a chug and a confusion, a skipped beat impossible to retrieve. I had no choice but to, but to shut down. I was having a blackout. I stood there in my own darkness, unable to move, like a dead post teetering in its hole. And as the world reduced itself to the pinhole, the night became a calliope of sounds, smells, touches, feelings of the night prior, before its beginning. Mm -hmm. 
I'm becoming very popular with my twilight crowd. One could say that I am a reluctant exhibitionist, playing out my life in front of the bars like a fool and his shadows. People are beginning to come around just for the entertainment of low dive prices. <laughs> and my ring of influence is becoming larger as the hours become smaller. All of these little clicks and circumstances, I, I didn't care who heard about me or the ones who would bring their friends down to the bar and gawk and poke sticks at me. On the contrary, I had become more concerned with the subtle shift in the crowds these days. Suddenly, there are flushes of young smart asses who ogle at me and my seasoned companions as though we were some rare and exotic animal living in our own natural habitat. I never speak to these slumming years, those infinite resources of silver spoons and spoiled milk lay waiting to be squandered on me. Hey there, old man. Let me buy you a drink. You're cool. Different stories are being told now. The stories that once floated around in the bar are now just merely wisps of yellow stained smoke, antiquated, all their charm and simple familiarity is being replaced. I'm watching all my favorite Hollywood bars molting into younger birds. The changes occurring in me are dog-eared with the same acceptable signs of a fading boozer. For example, I feel my body is rebelling against the tyranny of my hard-drinking life. I suspect free radicals are gathering information and forming camps inside my heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, and stomach. I have no proof, just a hunch. These feelings of implosion and decay are the very reasons I have come to chronicling my life on Bev Naps. It began with simple entries, a kind of weather report of how I was feeling on a particular day, for example, uh, January 17th. Doesn't hurt to piss this morning. A good day for drinking, and the like, and so on. However, my observations have slowly dissolved into forgetfulness. And now I write on napkins in order to catch, see, or remind anything of myself, the insignificance or otherwise of my life. It bothers me. It bothers me more than the shifts and tides of the seasons in my Mecca, or the covert war of my body. Even with the napkins, I cannot remember. I do not dream. My past is shaven with images, whittles of remembrances that hold little context. Special events or photo finishes lingering in the flash of crowded good times. It is crippling and I need to get it under control. I need to. Mm. My notes and reports 
they must again regain new urgency. I need to, I need to be persistent and and not following my life away as a drunken fool. I will reestablish my idle paradise three times before the cocktail crows. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, and it's empty. My place is to sit on the left-handed stool of God the Logger and bring drink to those who can't handle it. I am the ambassador of the potential sot, and I have a message for the sober, dying world. We are all drunks and varying digressions. And yet somehow, I always forget to give the message. The whole weave of heaven I have created in my drinking is getting lost in skipped beats and blackouts. <laughs> stay digression, stay advance no more upon my slippery soles to the matters at hand. Back to the night. <laughs> I had been blinded by a window. God had struck me off the earth. I lamented the lack of direction. Started with a tango of a sago palm, which catapulted me into the middle of the street, setting off the neighborhood dogs. God tripped me. He tipped me on purpose. I fell. Usually when I fall, I laugh at myself like some spirited, goat-headed god. This time, however, I, I was in a blind panic, like, like someone was holding my head underwater. I lost my body in the fall. And, I could not tell if I was standing or if I was still on the ground. I fell hard with no dispatch to my hands to break my headlong bearing, or lost on the earth with no bearings to guide, no landmarks or stars to orient the earth from the sky. <laughs> Flat tire and gravel stuck on my shoulder and wounded me atop the arch of my feet, yes. Nail wounds from some sick prankster who tried to nail my feet to the board. I knew I wasn't standing. I was adrift. I scrambled and lolled in the street like a swimmer without the water. Night dew oozed my wounds of St. Stephen's, napkins spilling out in undisciplined ways, words tossed to wispy breezes. I wrestled the ground like Jacob in an attempt to stand to my feet. Each time the ground slammed me back on my head. Now I knew I couldn't stay down there hugging the asphalt forever for fear the cops driving by might be uncovering the secret drunken romantic night. I took a breath and assessed the matter. No doubt I had fallen, and with strains to sober eyes, I noticed the sago palm leaf caught on my whaling jacket. It played a key to my descent. How could I have been so drunk? <laughs> I had taken excellent notes of the night. I had had a light night of drinking. So I reached with my free hand for the curb, the other hand having been pinned helplessly beneath my gravity-prone body. I knew I had to make it home safe on the roaring rapid streets. I had must needs to rest my donkey. 
I managed to crawl to the surf side of the curb and pull myself into a park bench, the sago palm on my back like a Vegas stripper. I pondered my transformation as I clung to the bench. I contemplated yelling out for help, but that would have blown my, my night cover. So I thought, I'll curl up with the palm and sleep here until the earth comes back to get me. Then a goddamned cruiser crested the hill and it made its round up Franklin. They saw me. I was sitting like a mock turtle on the bench. They shone their lights. Now, on any other night, to see a man half on and half off the benchmark with a sago palm fanning out of his backside like tail feathers would have wanted a one-way trip into the tank. However, God pulled a miracle out of my ass. The cops sat low in their cruisers. I didn't say a word. I squinted my eyes, fought any swaying, and gave him a Westminster wave. Then to further show the cops how sober I was, I reached for a cigarette without so much as a bobble, retrieved my chrome zippo, and masterfully lit my cigarette, and then waved again, as if to signal them ashore. What seems to be the opposite trouble? Now, from where I was sitting, I knew I, knew I did an excellent job. And the cops were unimpressed. One pulled his nightstick, the other, I assume, thought the flashlight would do just fine. And just as they were about to unload and conduct their investigations, an ample woman of equal ample charm came up and sat next to me. the cops stopped dead in their tracks. I looked up at the unfamiliar woman. There you are, she said, as she playfully rubbed my head. I thought, has our lady of the guacamole played some trick? Or am I being snatched from the lion's den? <laughs> I tried to focus on the woman the Sago Palm, the Palm Sunday, the St. Vitus dance, all slams and nonsense as I sat cocked on the bench staring dumbfounded at this strange woman. Don't worry, he's with me. We live right here. The woman pointed back to the house just behind us. I looked behind me. <laughs> sure enough, it was my bungalow. I had somehow stumbled to my bungalow, despite God striking me blind with the window. I stood up. To find the thread of balance to fake out the cops. And of course, the fucking cops crowed at me. What's that stuck to your ass? Uh, I and the large woman were already walking toward the bungalow. And I turned, and we both plainly said, It's a Sago poem. As only time can meet in miracles. The right fall of a coin. The cops' partners waved him back into the cruiser for a more important call. Yes. <laughs> they shut their lights and issued a warning to the woman before they left. I don't want to see him out here again tonight. success. <laughs> I mean, I got
got less. I mean, I have managed to walk upright again and fall right back into this romantic night. But I made it back to the hard tack gigs I call home. <laughs> oh, and with the wounds of St. Stephen's on my foot and on my shoulder, a sago palm leaf stuck to my ass and an ample angel to guide me. I am here in my dull kitchen. Christ could never have had a better Palm Sunday than this. Hmm. Empty, empty. Well, a few hints remaining. The world has changed its order. And also fading. I, I remember the window, the confusion of God's intrusion covering arms of a woman graced in a blue dress. This is the romantic night I'd hoped for. To overcome my fall by remembering.